scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. That a man can be weak and small today, but something can happen to that man and turn his seed into an oak tree. That someone can be small brothers and sisters please hear me whether in ministry whether in business that something can happen to Joshua Selman can happen to anybody right where you are not you don't he has nothing to do with geography that a system of the kingdom look at the mystery of a seed you pick a little seed even a mustard seed plant it in the earth expose it to a system and all of a sudden regardless of gravity regardless of whatever that seed sprouts who says you must remain at this level forever in the kingdom growth is a possibility in the kingdom men can start small but it's a cost to end small in the kingdom spiritually you can start small in the anointing you can start small in prophecy in visions you can start small but that you must ascend a dimension in the spirit where you are weighty. The word is weight. Weight. Capacity. Capacity. You can start small financially, but God can give you weight. Weight in this kingdom. You can start small ministerially. You can start small in the gift of the spirit. The issue is not the smallness. No matter how big or small a seed is, a seed is a seed because it will still die. But if that seed does die, then it will now begin to reveal the potentials there. Please sit down. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us. I love the way I love the way God helps us in this ministry I'm an organized person but not at the expense of the wisdom of the spirit when his wisdom comes that's it regardless of what it is and let me tell you you've heard me say there are not many sermons that God shows me like that and you follow every sermon that I tell you God revealed certain things to me you see the impact on those who believe it and receive it the lifter of men please sit down I believe it's one of the signs and wonders that the Lord wants to do in this season to just lift men like that and he used their lifting to prove to principalities and powers that I am still God that you have concluded about a sister and a brother a family based on whatever parameters let me tell you something with god when god wants to lift men he doesn't discuss it with anybody this is god god can lift somebody who was a drunkard yesterday regardless of what you think i thank god because he does not consult my enemies to lift me if god had to consult the wicked to lift me they will say because of my father's mistake i will not rise if god were to consult me maybe my tribe will be a disadvantage someone will come and say no this guy is from the north he should not be doing ministry at a global level maybe someone would have come to use all kinds of parameters but god the lifter of men 
he said jacob have i loved esau have i hated it's as simple as that i am the god of the universe i can lift whomsoever i choose that's what god has chosen to do with this ministry that's what god has chosen to do with my life god can choose to lift men at my level as a human being i can choose to lift men in whatever capacity i can someone can sit down and say i choose to give you admission it's within his power another person can stand up and say i choose to pay your rent i choose to give you a lift men and god can say i choose to lift you i choose to open your ministry to a horizon you have never seen i choose to wipe the tears of your family in one week I said, no, Lord, my plan was for one year. And God says, this is God talking. It is one week I have chosen. Please sit down. Let's see how God will help us tonight. The waters have been stirred. The waters have been stirred. God does these things that men will fear him. lifting in the kingdom is a mystery and a system it can be studied every single person in the kingdom please sit down if you can every single person in the kingdom desires growth desires greatness greatness is not a carnal word are we together now greatness is not a demonic word greatness is not a word for unbelieving people greatness is a kingdom language are we together now it's a system where god enlarges you in influence and capacity where he makes you a voice so that you can legislate on his behalf greatness is god's desire god is an enlarger he can expand the coast of men he did it for jabez he did it for the nation of israel he can expand people the very system of the growth of a plant as a plant grows it doesn't remain at the same length or breadth it expands so with growth should come greatness with growth should come increase i'm going to do my discussion tonight in threefold and i'll be very fast wherever we stop tonight we will just pray and then we can continue next week i decided to break it into three dimensions listen very carefully the lifter of men i want to share with you the kingdom system of lifting many of you by this teaching i believe you will find in this roadmap this compass where you are for many of you tonight's teaching will minister hope for many of you tonight's teaching will supply the staying power to continue for many of you tonight's teaching will lead to repentance a realignment because you find out that the path you are taking is not going to lead you there for many of us what you need in tonight's teaching is the grace to continue and for many of us what you need to learn tonight is thanksgiving because you will find out that your prayers have already been answered are we together the first dimension we are going to look at in the lifting of men is what i call the journey of faith write it down and let's discuss the journey of faith there is a system with which god lifts men in the kingdom in as much as he lifts men instantaneously the pathway that pathway to greatness there is a spiritual science there is a technology it can be learned are we together hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 let's start off with it tonight the bible says for without faith listen carefully for without faith it is impossible to please him for he listen carefully he that cometh to god must not may it's not a choice must believe two things one that he exists the journey to greatness starts with the journey of faith coming to a point of persuasion about the reality of god the bible says that in that journey of faith the first encounter you need is an encounter that furnishes the reality of the god you are dealing with listen carefully 
one of the things that the body of Christ must learn when believers get born again get filled with the Holy Spirit they need to be taught how to live by faith please write it down this kingdom operates by faith this kingdom operates by faith everything in this kingdom is faith dependent you cannot do business with God when you are still in doubt of the reality of his person not his power that he exists I'm showing you the, the way God guides people the Holy Spirit the journey of faith encapsulates everything the systems that the Holy Spirit brings you into so that you can have encounters and conviction you don't become no great man is in doubt of what his his persuasions that is something you must settle before you get to certain dimensions because the challenges that are before you will require strong conviction about the person of god are we together the bible says whosoever comes to god must believe that he is you will think it's a simple statement until challenges stand before you and you will find out that for the first time you are joining the mindset of an atheist to doubt is god really alive there is there is there are certain giants that you face on the mountain brothers and sisters if you have not settled the reality of god you will doubt ask john the baptist you will think just because john the baptist ordained jesus the reality of his godhead the reality of his person had been furnished in john when john was frustrated to a point where his human weakness was at his prime john sent somebody he said go and ask him are you the messiah how about john you ordained me into ministry john said with what is happening now no if you were god you are too mighty to leave me in the prison go and ask him oh i'm no longer sure jesus had to tell the disciples when things started going bad he said who do men say that i am and he said who do you say you would think that that was an easy question nobody could answer don't assume you know god because your knowledge of god is what will strengthen you is what will make you stand and say i'm not going back that mountain i was climbing many believers in church think knowing god is singing christian songs they think knowing god is praying in tongues just because you are saying bah, 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 you are just praying say i know god or knowing god is an election i am elder this i am pastor this i am apostle this do you know god of course i do let me ask you that same question do you know god <laughs> you will be surprised that you are shocked now you may not honestly be able to answer that question do you know God do you know God the Bible says whoever must come must believe that he exists there's something called a pray fool you know what a pray fool is a pray fool is an attempt to play games with your mind is that true sometimes can be expensive so they can tell you something like pastor alpha an alert has just come for you whereas it's not true that's how many people think god is and situations and circumstances can push you to a point where you believe god has calmed you read the frustrations of david in the book of psalms many times david would talk as though he was not born again many believers would say about david david no brothers and sisters if we are honest the pressures of life can change your perception in a way that even you you have to ask god for forgiveness are we together ask a woman who has been barren for 22 years no child ask a woman who has been serving in the house of god for 22 years no child ask her is there god and you see her cry and say don't ever ask me that question again she's serving god but she does not want to confront it because confronting it will bring anger where is that god for 22 years where was he when i was fasting where was he when i was praying don't be too quick to assume 
you know God. I'm not saying have you received Zoe. I'm not in doubt of that. The encounter that gives men stamina unto death. Are we together? When they caught Jesus, the disciples believed that Jesus will do all that he is known for again. And Jesus gave himself freely. They ran away. Why did they run away? They didn't run away just because they ran away because they felt cheated. You can know it because they ran back to their fishing. What a stupid man. You've wasted our time. You proposed to us that we we're going to be mighty men. My mother, even liar, sitting at my right and left. And now look the nonsense you have made out of my life. I go a fishing. And the other disciples say, We go with you. And suddenly Jesus appears. Little children, have you any catch? And they were looking, Who is that? And when they discerned it was the master, the Bible says Peter washed himself and ran and came. And Jesus looked at him, Simon Bajona lovest me thou more than this lovest thou me more than this and he said well lord i do feed my lamb he began to talk with him and you would think after that one jesus said, okay guys thank you the bible says in acts chapter 1 for 40 days jesus remained with the people and was teaching them on the matters of the kingdom and afterwards he left and the holy ghost came brothers and sisters do you know miracles don't make you know god they can help your faith many people saw Lazarus raised from the dead but it did not make them know God the presence of miracles are not enough the only entity that is capable of helping men know God is the Holy Ghost there is no amount of education and Bible study that can help you know God no the knowledge of God is a reality that only the Holy Ghost is able to help men the lifter of men follow me carefully so the, the starting point of a believers journey to a realm of greatness brothers and sisters hear me carefully is the journey of faith coming to a point where you are persuaded beyond beyond manipulation that God is alive you have come to a point where your results are too small to prove or declare otherwise the reality of God. You have come to a point where even when you are drinking Gary, no sugar, you don't just say, God, where are you? You don't know him. Are we together? There is an encounter. I've taught you what an encounter is. An encounter is a supernatural experience that makes the a reality real to you it furnishes the reality of a person or a thing to you i have touched this gentleman i have felt his arms i can't deny if you say oh you touched a bag of rice you are not going to tell me i touched a bag of rice because i've touched rice too i've touched a human being this is not rice this is a human being so no matter how you try to manipulate me there is a level of certainty everyone say the journey of faith <laughs> the bible declares in romans chapter 1 verse 17 galatians 3 11 hebrews 10 38 that the just shall live by faith not the just shall get by faith the just the template for the life of the just in this kingdom is faith everybody say faith your persuasion your persuasion about who god is not what he can do bible faith starts from a revelation of who god is it is only when you know who he is that you can believe what he can do many of us jump the encounter of who god is and we just go straight to what he can do must believe that he is and then when you are done believing that he is then that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek it no seek power now that you know he exists when you seek him passionately there is a reward for it 
the just brothers and sisters shall live by faith are we together now and you see the system of faith is such that except there is a word there cannot be faith even if you encounter a person it only produces conviction there cannot be faith because faith is an action word an action only happens when a word has come either to instruct you or give you something to do john i mean matthew chapter 4 and verse 4 says man shall not live by bread alone this is jesus speaking responding to satan but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of the god you have encountered man shall not live by bread alone but by every rima the revealed word that proceeds in this kingdom we live by the word of god we live by the speakings of god not just scripture not just verses not just chapters we don't live by verses we don't live by chapters we live by the speakings of the word the chapters and the verses are only containers they are not the word they carry the word the breath of the spirit opening those chapters and verses you see listen the message behind a chapter is the word of god not the story the message you may have been reading scripture but the message in the scripture is where the word of god is because that's where your instructions are hinged upon are we together now the journey of faith many people never become great in this life because their cultural experiences are greater than the revelation of who God is did you know that every time Satan wants to destroy you wants to limit your mind he uses the information that is already in your mind he doesn't bring an information outside there is a reality in your mind so he calls you and he says I hope you are aware that you are from this state and you say I remember the information I've gathered about that state is that people don't prosper and Satan says that's exactly what I'm saying and it is that raw material he begins to push you are you aware that you read Hausa or you read French and are you aware that in Nigeria if you study some of these things you may not have an opportunity for a good job you say yes I'm aware Satan uses the content of your environmental conditioning as the platform to limit you from believing God listen brothers and sisters please hear me especially if you are in ministry or going or going into ministry spend as much time as you can having encounters with God you will drink from that fountain for life if that fountain dare dries before you get to the promised land you may not arrive there are things today that will never shake me because there is a solid encounter about who God is listen if you don't know who God is you will never stand well because all kinds of things will come to derail you you know how many pieces of papers people have passed to my life in the name of prophecy you know how many kinds of things you know how many dreams and visions people send to my phone apostle i saw something god is going to destroy you next week you don't know god you will die like a chicken because of the conviction of a man someone just gets up and looks at you and says god is going to destroy your family we found out that your grandfather was a wizard and, they, and you now go back and believe is because you don't know who God is when you really know who God is you will learn in your knowledge of God that the Lord is gracious and compassionate he is slow to anger and rich in love the knowledge of God is what strengthens your conviction about operating in the kingdom David knew God what a man David knew God God gave him an option. Should I give you over to your enemies or to you? David said, no, 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 no. God, at least me and you, these men, they are wicked, but you are compassionate. What has your not knowing God cost you in life? Impatience. Not knowing God and not knowing how he operates has destroyed a lot of people. They call light darkness and they call darkness light. He that cometh unto God must believe. The first thing the Lord began to do in my life, brothers and sisters, 
it's not to give me anointing it's not to give money it is always the journey of faith by faith by faith by faith lord how will this destiny be built by faith lord i'm an orphan my father is dead my mother is dead and god says you must learn how we operate in this kingdom it is by faith what does that mean by my word if i speak to you notice that my power follows my word so if i speak to you you must learn to trace the direction of my power by looking for where my word is anywhere my word is not stop looking for my power there if you find power there is divination my power follows my word if i say i will lift you then you stay at that area of the world that's where the anointing will meet you the anointing follows what god said the anointing has no business doing anything god has not said you can know where the anointing is by finding out what has god said if god said i will exalt you don't look for the anointing for any other thing the anointing for exaltation will remain until that word comes to pass then returns back to god as a messenger job done then he will say something again then the anointing will start looking for it the anointing does not just move at random the anointing backs up the word so the issue is not where is the anointing the issue is what has god said are you getting what i'm saying many believers let me tell you why we don't get miracles we roam around around areas and zones where god has not said anything and we keep crying for anointing to come and the holy ghost tells you this kingdom is a faith kingdom you don't just cry for anointing to come you cry for his word send your word oh god and the anointing follows that word you want to build a ministry what did god say nothing so you just carve out a ministry lord you must anoint this ministry the anointing said no way i don't work that way i walk i respect the word spoken notice satan does not fight anointing he fights the word because he knows that the word has the word like like when president buhari comes to zaria you don't need to bring el rufai El Rufai will necessarily be part of that entourage. That's how it works. Many believers don't pay attention to find out what God is saying. We pay attention reading the Bible. We pay attention reading devotionals, which is good. But to be able to understand what God is saying, look, notice that the secrets of the success of people, they didn't walk by faith just by reading the Bible at random. They walk by faith by staying to hear. We are going to fight. Oh God, what is your, what, what is your word? And God says, I will give you victory. They say, guys, let's rejoice. Victory would be guaranteed. If you don't live by faith, you will end where your parents ended. It takes faith to transit you. Let me tell you, waiting for somebody to give you a guarantee of job after school is foolishness. It will never happen. Everybody you see that has risen to any point of greatness in the kingdom did so by faith. The reason why many of us don't get results is that our faith is not in God. Our faith is in men auxiliary support systems my uncle is a senator in ibadan my uncle is a senator in uyo i my uncle is coming out for presidency next year and so when you say those things i'm pride in them and say no i can't fail and the bible says woe to any man who puts his strength in a man the greatest of any man can fail you so god begins to teach you son i want you to be great that's the promised land but this journey is going to be by faith and he said lord at the point of this journey i just have one gideon's international one bible no revelation no wisdom god says don't worry all i need you to do follow where my word is and you will get there follow my word follow my word follow my word so when you open the bible all you do is to just read oh i will bless you mm -hmm when you read it read it like the will of a man to you many people read the bible like god speaking to the disciples i have a personalized bible it was a gift that was sent to me years ago everywhere they wrote the name of anybody for good 
they changed it to Joshua Selman the whole Bible I don't use it now but it's a powerful revelation so thus saith the Lord to you see it written there Joshua Selman fear not I have redeemed you and he's speaking to me now I have called you by name fear not fear not that means the anointing for courage is somewhere because God has spoken to me are you seeing now you can know what anointing is there don't you see how the anointing moves in koinonia when the word comes the grace for it is what comes god healed blind Bartimaeus. he did not become a rich man his cry his demand was to be healed god spoke to him in the area of healing the anointing that came was for healing blind Bartimaeus never prospered just because god spoke healing it is the word that comes to you that controls the anointing that follows you god called benihin into the healing ministry there are many auxiliary graces but the strongest grace that operates is the grace that came with that word for as long as that word remains on him that grace remains on him are we together yes pastor if I come to your house and you ask your wife to go and bring minerals for me you gave a word the performance will be in the area of where minerals your wife will not go and carry your shoe you can still give me your shoe but you chose to give me minerals because that's what you saw that will minister to me more and you say wife go and bring mineral she will go to the kitchen or wherever they keep the minerals and carry it and bring it the performance was in the direction of the word you see please sit down sir you see that we neglect the word of god yet we want performance many believers including those who study the bible don't take the word of god seriously let me tell you if god has spoken to you and you know he spoke to you die there this is faith these careless things people do around one leg here two weeks later you will never rise like that but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded god you told me i may be the last born in my family but you have assured me that in my father's lifetime they will glorify god i believe you i take you i believe that word your reception of the word the anointing begins to come because you have believed the bible says who has believed our report it is to that person the arm of the lord the arm of the lord is his right hand of power it is who believed the report that sees the right hand not who wants to see the right hand brothers and sisters in this kingdom there is no advantage to your life until the word of god comes to you hear it the word of god is your advantage in life whether the word revealed through illumination from scripture or spoken to your spirit by the holy ghost put together a miracle service at the end of every month lord this is your word yes sir and that journey of faith god guarantees that every time the anointing to make sure that word comes from him see when you train yourself don't you know that it's risky sometimes you hear me talking about people oh there's somebody here the anointing you think i'm just guessing you try it and see whether it happens there is you train yourself you don't say lord let the anointing go there you already know that once the word of god comes the requisite grace will follow it come on now come on now so god comes to a family brothers and sisters where nobody becomes anything and god now speaks a word to that family he sends that word to jacob and intends that that word lights upon israel and god comes to you and say mary you are a young woman a young virgin but i want to speak to you you will carry that holy thing and mary said really be it unto me and the anointing that will force her womb seed or no seed to take the seed of the word of god the incorruptible seed that abides forever and jesus came so the next time you see people doing extraordinary exploits don't say they are lucky they believed they believed lord will you really do this i believe you lord look at me 
the last person who would have helped me in life just died and god said a human being died but my word is still alive keep going and he said lord school fees is tomorrow i'm in 200 level you spoke to me that i will become a professor i'm already on my way out and god says no keep your gaze on the word if the word is there be sure the anointing is there god's instrument god's performance factor the anointing every time i travel for ministration i don't know the cases i'm going to see i don't know who is going to come when i come for koinonia when we come for miracle service i don't say go around and find out the cases and write let me be sure you know that god sent a word and you know that the anointing is following it let me tell you if god speaks a word to your finances then keep going the journey in this life is by faith you can be weak sitting down right now and god says you are going to be the overseer of an international ministry you will communicate the purposes of god you say lord but i'm a woman i am weak and god says don't insult me i have sent my word i've sent my word i've sent my word and all of a sudden now do you know it's possible for that person to die without it coming to pass and so just because you didn't engage it you will now say you see god said it the word of god does not work automatically the same way no seed grows automatically there must be a reaction between the seed and the earth the seed has potentials to produce but you keep keep beans or maize take away moisture keep it on in your kitchen after five years you will still see it there but take the same seed do something to it add it to the earth and all of a sudden a tree will come out brothers and sisters when the lord called me there was no human being that said i will support you there was no family meeting that said oh young man we are your uncles and aunties we have decided to come together because we discovered that you will need a suit or look i have an uncle in it and he will call you it is by faith I was talking to someone i said i came to zaria with one bag one shoe i don't know how many clothes where did everything come from faith not store faith your destiny will only happen by faith that ministry you have been seeing in the dream you will keep seeing it till jesus comes it is faith that will bring it alive everybody say the journey of faith there is no great man in the kingdom who does not have a testimony of triumph to faith you read about the great men and women that god is using around the world and see the impossible situations that surrounded them kenneth e hagen was born with a heart deformity it took faith to cancel it out david yongi cho his own limitation and imperfection some of these men were born in nations they were they, they were racist nations and everything and faith faith have you not learned that faith is the victory this is the victory that will give you the house the victory that will give you the child the victory that will turn your wilderness even When the Lord was speaking to me you were not there what was the guarantee brothers and sisters everything in life is a risk the only guarantee in life is faith God said it he said it in his word I have found it I know the thoughts that I think towards you Joshua Selman hallelujah they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end Lord you really said this about me yes sir I said this son Lord you said this about me yes sir behold I give you authority over snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemies here's the revelation and nothing shall by any means he never said nothing shall hurt you nothing shall buy there are many means with which things hurt people and god said shall buy any means <sighs> you are that committed to protecting me thank you jesus 
it was not always rosy but faith keeps you to keep seeing the promised land even if you are inside fire don't let anybody fool you that is from the speakings of God into the promised land no sir the journey is far but once you face you keep your eyes like a flint then I give you a guarantee the dust will rise and settle you will still be standing it is by faith that we rise it is by faith that we reign there are people who came to Zaria to school pastor they came to Zaria with just a box they, they didn't even have admission they just came by faith I would die here today they are lecturers no house there are school of ministry students who have come now some of them came by faith just do you know if you really believe God his integrity will have to come and prove God will not allow your trust in him to be aborted it's too precious listen I'm a man of logic I'm a man of organization but no matter how organized you are in life if you must get to the other side there are times you will get up waiting for a boat you may that boat will come when you are 80 years you will just need to get up and say Lord you said I should go to the other side here I come you have to get up and jump in that's why many young men will never build because it takes faith not cement many young men will never rise up and move in life they will never go out of their parents house 40 years they are still there let's take it easy i've applied let me see how jobs will happen in life no sir no sir it's good to be responsible it's good to be as whatever as you can how much money do you have in your account to do ministry you really believe you can have enough it takes faith apostle where will the partners come from apostle if i reach lintel level apostle i wanted to buy a house and they say it's 15 million and all that i have right now is 250 naira that somebody even gave me faith is a currency we purchase things with it in the kingdom lord i believe you where are you sending me to oh god i'm sending you to south africa lord i've never gone out of nigeria son the anointing follows my word if i have spoken to you and i give you the go ahead go there are some of you as you are looking at me god is saying how long will you sit down and not arise to let me stand up for your family god has already told you you are the savior of your family what kind of vision are you waiting for lord what is the next instruction i take on that mantle what is the next instruction what is the next instruction you have told me that i will be great you have said i will not be small lord i've been crying about the class of degree i graduated with and you have come to me in your mercy and you have said you will multiply me i will not be small you will glorify me i will not be few lord i engage let my heart be the earth for the seed to be planted and brothers and sisters you will see this wonder working god who has helped some of us and produce glory out of foolish and stupid things whenever you see great results many of you sit down and think kai this people must be lucky what a lucky businessman what a lucky man of god oh papa Ia Deboye, so lucky ah lucky luck I'm a believer the journey of faith some of you this is where you are with God notice you know where you are by the kind of dealings that come God can sit down and you you say Lord I have only 500 naira and God says give everything there's something he's teaching you it's not all about parting with 500 naira he's teaching you how a day will come he will flex your spiritual muscles whether there is money or not it doesn't affect you he's weaning you from dependence to physical things i've shared with you my story i'm not saying you should do it you do it at his word i have taken trips with zero naira zero naira and return back to my destination with zero naira because god said it i remember when i was in area bz i would trek because i would believe now whether it was god i had or not i don't know but i'm not ashamed it's a training process 
I would sit down and trust God for grace. That time, no ATMs, no nothing. No branches. Branches don't even connect themselves. I would believe that God put money for me in the bank and I would trek from BZ to First Bank. I would join a long queue praying in tongues, believing that I will withdraw money. I would stand there after hours all of a sudden i would now submit it and the person says, sorry are you expecting some money i'll say yes say, well sorry you need to maybe call the people the money is not there and imagine how heartbroken two hours yet i will look and say lord i give you the glory and god will be silent as if he's not hearing me when god is silent it's not ignorance it's training there's something he's doing to you you need to learn this Many of you have been taught that God always talks. It's not true. God talks, but he doesn't always talk. When he's training you, you keep quiet. The journey of faith. All of a sudden, they transfer something to you. And God says, carry that 10,000. Buy the chairs for a church. And he said, God, why are you doing this to me? I go to bed in the night and I see the visions of a great destiny. I wake up and Lord, you are humiliating me. What is this? And God says, no, I'm teaching you how to trust me. I'm teaching you. How, how will you be great when you don't learn how to trust him? How will you be able to give the car and give the house? How will you be able to give the word of knowledge among thousands of people when you are afraid, when you are still, your ego is still on the line? how will you be able to stand and say there's somebody in so 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 place you think you can have that courage without training no sir the journey of faith one day god will lead you you are going to have a healing ministry and god will lead you to someone on wheelchair you will know you had god you will lay hands and lay hands and pray and pray and pray and nothing will happen you will call upon god and you will feel like god is bell and at the end of it, in shame and embarrassment, you will turn to the people and say, I'm sorry. I, I came here full of faith. You see that I love God. And sometimes you are guilty for the honorarium they give you because nothing happened. And you go back and say, God, why did you do this? God will say, sit down, let's continue. <sighs> continue what? God will say, you passed the test. You still came back to me even in your failure. It's a sign you will never leave me even when you fail because if you fail you should look for an alternative but god watches you as you fail and you come back and still bring the shame lord i failed they invited me for the meeting i promised them that there will be an impartation and at the end of that meeting i was so disappointed lord who else will i run to and god says come it's a journey of faith is god helping somebody great people never become great until they learn how to take God at his word. Many of you have not learned to take God as his word. If God speaks to you, then know that everything will be all right. If God tells you your womb will carry a child, then brothers and sisters, whether or not there is a womb there, know that the anointing is going to come and produce a womb because God said so. Is the Lord speaking to us? Some of you, this is the level you are now. You are starting with God. God is working with you. Sometimes God will speak. Do you know God even uses your mistakes to help you? There are times you think you had God. You had like God said you should go out. He won't stop you and correct it. He can still use it. And you come out in the night and say, Lord, I had like you said I should come out. And you stand there 10 minutes. Nothing happens. You feel so ashamed and go back. And then you say, Lord, was it you or not? God says that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is you are working on your aptness to act when you perceive that it is me. When you are about to fall, he will protect you. You say, not so far. My might can keep you, but let's continue the training. Listen, working with God is not about accuracy. It's about your commitment to do whatever you know. God has the power to stop you from failing. We are too conscious of ourselves and our reputation. That's why we can never be great. God can speak to you and say, young man, start a pure water company. And you say, oh God, please don't, don't make a fool out of me. Where I don't even know anything about it. No. I have, except God does not speak to me. 
there is nothing i will do when god has not spoken i have learned the excellency of the voice of god please learn this tonight do not ever be found where the voice of god is not in. no matter what price you must pay to be sure that god is there pay it three days before koinonia started i went back for a retreat i said lord you see the enormity of the work please speak to me if you are not the one and this is not your will i will cancel this thing now and god said no son it is me so if even if Benny Hinn calls me today and papa Ia, Deboya, and all the fathers of faith and say son we see what you are doing may the lord honor you but um you are not in the will of god i will kneel down and appreciate them and say i respect you as fathers but give me some time to go back to god but i know that i had god do you know why many of us never stay to the end we didn't take out time to be sure that it was god i believe i believe lord i believe lord i believe i believe i believe Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. In Exodus chapter 3, when God wanted to begin to walk Moses the path of greatness, notice the first thing that happened, an encounter. Moses saw a bush, a, he's standing and tending Jethro, his father in law's sheep. All of a sudden, a voice calls him. And Moses comes and begins a conversation with God. Who are you? Where are you talking from? because it is on the strength of your encounter he reveals himself to you he reveals his word to you he reveals the potency of that word and then you can go who are you and then in verse 15 he begins to speak moses said if i go to pharaoh at least i know ra I know these gods i have seen similitudes of them as idols i have heard them talk and I know, do you know it's because the nation of Israel really did not know God. That's why when they were tired, they said, build us the one we know. Please, leave this your God of Hebrews. Build the God that brought us out of Egypt. Aaron, make sure you build. And they collected all the materials and built a golden calf. Behold, everybody goes to the person you know. And if you don't know God, get ready to go to a harbor list. If you don't know God, get ready to go to a witch doctor or go somewhere. Those who go to these people are not wicked people. They are just people who don't have convictions enough. And God told Moses, he said, Go and tell them that I am has sent you. He said, I am that I am. Moses said, interesting. Which one is that? He said, okay, you are crying for an encounter. Because you can't go and stand before Pharaoh when you don't know me moses let me reveal myself and after that revelation he said moses take your rod throw it on the ground became a serpent pick it by the tail and then he called it the rod of god he said this rod wherewith you will do signs and he said go moses goes to stand before rameses his half brother who had now become the pharaoh and said thus saith the god of the hebrews let my people go and Ramesses laughed said Moses we played games together for 40 years you have been away I'm sure some poverty has changed your mindset all kinds of bad things have happened to you and he said no I met another personality the God of heaven are you going to listen to me or not he said no through his rod it became a serpent and then Pharaoh laughed and said Moses shame on you this is what you came to threaten me with. Janus, Jambers, come and show this guy that Egypt has grown since he last left. And the guys laughed and threw their rods. And then all of a sudden, a snake swallows another snake, does not become fat. And then Moses picks it up, says, explain it. Ah, and Pharaoh looks. He couldn't pretend that did not touch him. Say, but I'm still not convinced enough. Go. But he must have slept in the night and said, wow. Janus Jambres come what happened where did that matter disintegrate to there is a God of creation 
revealing himself and after the last plague many of you don't know why pharaoh cried pharaoh did not let them go just because his son died no let me tell you when you study egyptian religion the covenant that they enter with their firstborn sons that will later become pharaoh do you know moses wrote books that are dangerous today because moses was taught something he was covenanted and was taught moses was going to be the next pharaoh it would have been pharaoh moses not Ramesses. so moses was already being prepared and in that state he wrote certain things and those books are still being used in occultism today but he met the god of heaven and changed his life and he came and demonstrated a dimension do you know god already told moses that i will harden pharaoh's heart i hope you know so moses didn't go and say god don't send me again I, i'm tired of this disgrace the information has already been given and he said i will make you a god the word and the anointing to make it happen happened and in the end they came out in a hurry out of egypt because when god says it there is the grace to make it happen great things the lord has spoken of us oh zion is up to us to believe him and know that god does not lie god does not lie god does not lie dear families listen to me i know the things that are happening in your various families but god does not lie you only cry when the book has not been opened you weep when there is no word if the speakings of god has come your direction then wipe your tears wipe your tears listen do you know why david was crying when his son was sick that he had with Bathsheba, he knew if god did not speak that child must die and god knew that if he speaks the child will leave so god refrained from talking till the child died if god spoke it would be impossible for that child to die and god kept quiet and when he died david said no problem he got up and washed himself and comforted himself notice how in ancient times people will stay helpless then you will now hear in the seventh month in the fifth day the word of the lord came when the word of the lord comes that's it they watch themselves they stand up and start rejoicing they've not fought oh but they are already calculating how to share the land you this is your own whereas the giants they are sleeping imagine somebody sharing your property when you are still alive because the word already killed you David knew what he was doing when he stood before Goliath. He said, God just gave me bonus to make me a king. Oh, foolish giant. You are a giant and you are not wise. Don't you know it's the word of God that kills and, make a, and makes a lie? The word of God is against you. You are dead. Anything would have killed him. Not just a sling. Anything would have killed him. The word was already backing up everything. And all of a sudden, that guy died. Removed his head lifted it gave it to the birds there are things god has spoken to you go back and open your notebook before the troubles came when you started disbelieving god open the notebook and see what he told you did he not tell you by 2019 you would have entered certain dimensions and it's one year to the time and it doesn't look like it will ever happen brothers and sisters this my god this my god God is truly Jehovah Shab Shab. He can wake up overnight, shake himself from his throne and change your life. Yes, sir. Say, my God is able. Please say it. My God is able. Ah, apostle, but it's already been nine years delay. God can give you triplets overnight. Overnight. Overnight compress nine years to nine months healthy all of them will come out and god will say did i not tell you i can make it happen the bible never tells us jesus spent nine years in the nine months in the womb of mary there is nowhere in scripture where it was calculation of nine months no we just know that as soon as they left and went to where he could give birth mary gave birth i believe that God allowed that time just 
so that human beings will not start doing stupid things but i believe mary would have still been pregnant mary would not have that faith to believe that she can be pregnant and give birth to a bouncing baby boy in two weeks and then also because she was subscribing to the law of process so that we may learn jesus grew but there's no record in scripture that it was nine months expect unusual results in your life as you believe god i i cannot get usual results in my life no usual results mean you are scientific unusual results mean there is a finger there is a word upon your life there is a word upon your life expect it expect it unusual results unusual results by the word of god unusual ministry unusual business by the word of god look the testimony the lady shared happy i'm sure many of you didn't believe it that she said she was listening to um um uh, what they call it a message at six percent and i'm sure some of you will go and ask her later confess is it true let me tell you brothers and sisters my phone has almost died i was on the trip i held it it started charging from my hand charging till it finished i know some of you will not believe it something has happened to our generation we have reduced ourselves back from true spirituality to a realm where we are so sensual and carnal we want to calculate how can a happen to b to make it c and god says the word plus anything is equal to what i want the word plus anything that's god's equation the word plus a failure can give birth to a man of god don't sit down and start asking god nonsense please listen we have misused this scripture wisdom is profitable to direct to endorse carnality and depravity of mind ah let's be wise let's be reasonable you keep being reasonable till life closes the door at you this journey is a journey for men and women of faith listen let me tell you the truth there are times you would think you had god but you'll find out it wasn't God. Don't be ashamed and let it not stop you from taking action the next time you hear that is God. Keep making the mistakes till you learn. God will protect you with his love and integrity. It's not easy for people to just derail like that. The sincerity of your heart will compel the mercy of God to guide you. Don't be afraid of making the mistake. That's how you learn. I'll be lying if I tell you every hearing God that I think I've had was really him. As I have grown, I found out that, ah, that other time, so it wasn't him. But it still doesn't matter. His grace and his mercy, you exercise yourself unto godliness. The fear of believing God has destroyed many people. I believe him today. If God tells me, tell Emeka, I will bless him. When I say Emeka, he doesn't have to fall down and roll. I have sent the word. If it never happens, it's because he did not engage it. He allowed the seed to be barren. But if Emeka believes that word, like Mary, he may not even know how the thing happens. The same word will now start scouting for the men that will make that word come to pass. Where is your house? In the realm of the spirit. It will take the word of God and you're believing it to make it your experience where are your children where are your well-behaved children not just in your brain in the realm of the spirit it takes faith to bring it where is the property of koinonia where is the headquarters of koinonia it's in the realm of the spirit it will take faith to bring it are we together apostle where is my job I've been eyeing civil defense. Take your eyes from civil defense and look on to Zion. Are we together? You look at civil defense, you'll be disappointed to your, to your own pain. I lift up my eyes onto the hills. Question, from whence cometh my help? It says, my help cometh from the Lord, the maker, not from my father, not from my uncle. He can use them, but my help comes from God. Say after me, my help comes from the Lord so don't get up and start moving around the street like a fugitive like someone who does not have help you move around and say look life save look at the way life is working look at my only shoe look at this don't talk like that 
the word of God is upon me I may be weak now but the word of God has declared that I'm strong the word of God has declared that Gentiles come to my light I believe it in the name of Jesus I believe I expect the appearance of Gentiles the just shall live by faith let me tell you what will happen to you when many people especially and mistakenly I have noticed a trend that many matured believers are throwing away the reality of walking by faith simply because of higher dimensions of revelation you find somebody saying this now and they say ah ah you are still a baby christian you should have known that god will still do it you will leave the rules you will never get the result you must remain childlike there are times i walk around my room i wake up in the night like a zombie i'm just walking around in the name of jesus joshua selman you are a royal diadem in the hands of the lord the favor of god is upon you koinonia is growing strong by the spirit of the living god lord you spoke to me you declared that this is my year of triumph i will say it is your if i say it's your own year of triumph you can enjoy it and i may never enjoy it i can carry my pride and sit down and by december 31st the fact that the word came through me does not mean it's also not for me that's why i listen to koinonia messages and i receive the prophecies because the word only passes through a man but it is for men are we together the journey of faith are you walking by faith are you speaking by faith are you living by faith apostle i'm only i'm 40 years now as a lady look at me which man will come to marry me what did god tell you god told me a good man is coming to get married to me then stay there stay there and die there and let god apologize to you for lying to you but stay let god apologize to you for lying to you but stay there are you getting what i'm saying i'm teaching you how to walk by faith please don't sit down and be overly scientific and intellectual about your life it won't happen that way it won't happen that way let me tell you something um the lord spoke to me a particular season and said i am bringing a particular number of people to sow into your life and to sow into the ministry when the Lord told me, I said, Lord, this is your word. I believe it. Do you know, I believe the Lord. And sometimes people will send me recharge card, 100 Naira. I said, Lord, thank you. I celebrate your doing. You spoke to me. I'm seeing a performance. You don't just sit down and say, Lord, is he 100 Naira you are talking about? Don't play games with me. I'm not a small child. No. Whether it is the fist or a finger, it's still God. So you celebrate it lord if i if i see a finger then there must be a hand if i see a hand there must be a personality thank you for the finger because the hand is coming and i tell you true to god's word true to god's word hallelujah the lord told me through the messages he would send these things all over the teachings all over all around i believed it when he said it i believed it at that time there was no possibility to see this but i believed it right now from taxi drivers to men of god to churches everywhere they say koinonia messages they say kai the guy is lucky he's just intelligent this is not intelligence this is the foolishness of believing god versus his power that responds when men believe him the same way god can speak to you and say dance for one hour and receive your husband is a god please don't don't make a fool out of me i'm not i'm not stupid god will say that's my word for you it's not the word for everybody and you will be dancing like a fool for one hour and then the devil will make sure that one mocker comes to knock ah are you okay this one that you are shouting i'm fine what are you doing dancing for what forget it <laughs> say hey church 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 is turning people into stupid things you see that they are like that guy that told the king in samaria he said that told elisha i said ah, ah, even if god will open the heaven will we be able to do this he said you will see it you will never eat of it hallelujah 
there is nothing God tells me that I will not believe him I'm not afraid if I find out he's not the one I will say okay God I believed I thought it was you thank God there is restoration in the kingdom so it doesn't make any difference but I will keep flexing my muscles what has God told you that the devil is about to cheat you now and tell you that it was not God what has God told you that the devil is about to tell you oh, your family forget all those people can you believe God don't ask how it will happen just say Lord I believe you pray in one minute before I take the second session quickly pray Lord I believe you you have spoken this concerning me I believe you I believe you pray I lift my voice to you you're the awesome God I lift my voice Awesome God, awesome God, I lift my hands to you, you're the awesome God, I lift my hands to you, awesome God, awesome God. The Lord declared unto Abraham, that he will be the father of many nations the Lord declared to Abraham that in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed Abraham was old stricken Sarah was old stricken had passed menopause as it is in the manner of women but they had faith he counted him faithful the Bible says he wavered not at his faith through unbelief unbending unshakable persuasion God may call you to be a prophet and for 10 years you will not see one vision not even one dream stay there Lord you said the prophetic office is for me I believe you every word that God has spoken concerning me I write it down and once in a while when you see my notebooks you don't like them because some of them are old but I would never throw them I will use gum cellotape fix them because those things control my destiny do you know when God spoke to me about koinonia 2005 and I pick it and I look at it Lord you have done this and that in the name of Jesus I trust you this is what will happen one day we will stand like this in koinonia's international headquarters I will remind you I will remind you people will say wow this guy is so lucky you mean people like you like that nobody's lucky everybody is faithful you push your faith until you make it happen <sighs> number two we'll stop somewhere and pray the journey of faith is the first number two I title it the track record number two the track record the track record you want to become great in the kingdom you not only trust God enough or alone you must have a track record most people don't know what a track record is in the spirit in the physical there is how they can get information about you is that true because there is a track record they can get have you been involved in any criminal activity have you been involved in this how old are you and they try to check with the police have they filed any case with this with that okay we can allow you go to any nation because you are not associated with any terrorist group there was a track record of being a well-behaved citizen in your country when they bring out your information and they find out in 10 years you were in prison five times are we together now and this happened they would detain you and say no 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 we don't consider this guy healthy to be lifted to that nation that's how it is in the spirit let me tell you something god does not use your past but he uses your track record a track record is is what validates that you are qualified it is still by grace but that qualification is based on capacity track record this is the hardest part of the journey to greatness 
establishing a track record in the spirit a track record of godliness a track record of prayer a track record of fasting a track record of consistency a track record of patience a track record of endurance years ago i saw a gentleman who graduated from nda and i saw his calendar they made a calendar he was well you know in his apparel and they wrote his name whatever it is that they wrote and then under like a caption they just wrote a testimony of endurance testimony because from day one as soon as he entered nda they started kicking him up and down giving him broom to sweep he cried and saw his mother waving him goodbye and now that guy was at the other side of his pain rejoicing with his badge and he sees one civilian who has not been trained try to stop him and he says frog jump quickly let me show you that i have been authorized are we together and the civilian i will beat you and he says there's only one part of your body i can touch and you will die not fall down i was shown in the military camp that men are like machines there is one part of their body you touch they fall down and die you are there bragging because you are big i'm not just wearing uniform for nothing the uniform means i've been given secrets i went through things that's how you come out and the devil looks like you and thinks every young man is just like that i will rubbish you at least like, and he says ah, ah. that's what you are doing to me he said i will do it again and again because i was shown something about you i didn't know you were this weak my staying power there was a track record if you don't have a track record you cannot be committed the true grace of the kingdom first samuel chapter 22 and verse 1 and 2 the bible speaks about david the journey from his exit from saul running away to the throne he was in a cave that the bible identifies as atulam it was a place of dissertation it was a place of rejection the bible says therefore david departed thence and escaped they wanted to kill him but he ran to a cave called adulam and remained there like a fugitive and a vagabond but a man was creating a track record a track record notice in the bible moses left egypt and was in the wilderness a track record the Bible just tells us about Elijah. Elijah the Tishbite. He was not born an adult. There was a track record. Look at John the Baptist who came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. He was in the wilderness. Certain things were being taught him there. He was eating locusts and wild honey until his season of appearing. What of Jesus? From age 12, ladies and gentlemen, we never hear anything about Jesus again until age 30. 18 years of silence read your bible from age 12 you don't read one thing about jesus again until age 30. what happened for 18 years there are all kinds of theories some postulate that he went to india to go and learn under buddha some postulate that he went to uk i mean all kinds of postulations here and there but one thing i know is that at age 30 whilst john was 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 baptizing people here comes jesus from wherever he had been and he came out and he said behold the lamb do you have the track record many pastors want the loyalty of people without a track record who has tested you has god tested you with money has god tested you with power has god tested you with the anointing has god tested you with failure don't just sit down and expect to have a large church out of nowhere some of these our balloon expectations is why we are disappointed no matter how fiery you are you will not escape the test that creates a track record hmm. let me show you something i found that really blessed me give us hebrews 11 please hebrews 11 and we'll read from verse 24 to 29 hebrews 11 and 24 we are going to pray Hebrews 11, 24 to 29. 24. Read it with me, please. One, two, read. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, adulthood now, refused to be called Pharaoh's, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. 25. Choosing. Hold on choosing 
how can a man choose affliction choosing rather to suffer affliction so that he can prove that he's on God's side is a choice than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season 26 esteeming the reproach of Christ of Christ's greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward we are reading to 29 by faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he what endured as seeing him who is invisible through faith he kept the passover and the sprinkling of blood lest you know this and that and that and then 29 the bible says by faith he passed through the red sea as by dry land which the egyptians are saying to do were drowned by faith he made a choice how can a man choose to suffer and he says by faith track record you would have bribed and you would have been rich since 2006 but by faith you chose that i will walk in integrity and it costed you some of our parents today would have been multi-millionaires if only they signed one signature they refused to sign that signature and for 20 years they are paying the price it's a track record the realm of the spirit pays attention to your track record is god speaking to us track record when you finish a great meeting and God helps you, 30 people in the fellowship, and all of a sudden you finish, and when you are alone, you get down on your knees. Lord, thank you for the privilege. You gave me the privilege to lead these people. It's a track record. The heavens are witnessing it. Remember, you are the one who is going to be great, but God is watching the track record. Somebody gives you 100 naira, another person gives you 1 million. God sees how you thank him for two of them. You just throw the envelope with 100 naira and say, Lord, this is money. Thank you. He's watching your heart. You bring all of them together and say, Lord, whether it is 100 naira or it is 10 million, I thank you. You are the doer. He's watching you removing the tithe when no one is supervising you. It's a track record. Many of us do not know that God accredits men. That's why you will see certain people you think should rise and God says, leave them there. You better leave him there leave the people there because god knows what he's seeing koinonia fast and you are inside all of a sudden ah bring me yam add egg sauce bring ketchup and you just eat and belch and then come out with your mouth dry track record one day you will tell one spirit leave and that spirit says you you you, you think that everybody's an idiot There are many men of God that don't give. They say give, but they don't give. There is no track record. Tight. The last time they gave tight was five years ago. No track record. Are we together? You need track record. You need a track record in the realm of the spirit. Somebody gives you a new phone. Ah, this cheap phone, 5,000. Lord, is this all you could? I prayed for two weeks. And God is watching your heart. It's a track record. A track record of ingratitude. You are not ready for the iPhone. It will never come. Are we together? There are many pastors, three members, four members, and you see them preaching with their heart and loving God. Do you have transport money? There are just five of you. Would you mind coming to eat in our house? Since you are five, we prepared meals enough. And the Lord is saying, look at him. Look at this. You see him preparing to talk to five people as if he's preaching in a convention. And God says, that's my son. Not that you sit down and snore away. Then one day, they are invited. He says, hey, big church or small. Say, ah, 1,000 to you. say, you mean it? Ah, let's go and buy Suto because God is in that church. You see? Those kinds of things is why many people never rise. Whether I'm counseling, what do you know? When we round off now and I stand to counsel people, I give it the same seriousness because it is someone's destiny. Do you have a track record of trust?
can God trust you? What have you done with what he gave you? He gave you a little level of wisdom. What have you done with it? He gave you a little level of influence. What did you do with it? He gave you intelligence. God never gives you a harvest. He gives you a seed and watches your management of it. You need a track record. And part of establishing that track record may require you going through what I call the furnace of affliction. <laughs> you see, Ba? This furnace of affliction you see is not every negative thing that is demonic. Let me show you something. Second Corinthians, please. We'll find somewhere to pray. Second Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 8 to 10. Please, quickly. Second Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 8 to 10 to 10 let me show you what happens here the fullness of affliction now let me tell you i don't believe god causes tragedies no he doesn't but i believe god can take advantage of every situation and produce glory out of it watch this the goal before i read this the goal of this season of creating a track record is to reveal to you the weaknesses and the limitations of your human nature outside of the agency of the spirit the goal is to strengthen your dependence on the holy spirit you will see how weak how frail how incapacitated you are as a person outside of the assistance of god dependence on the holy spirit no longer becomes something you do just because you are in ministry you have learned by your passing through the furnace of affliction by your passing through these seasons creating a track record it is seldom um A very painful process I don't think there are exceptions it is at this time that you will pray and pray and pray and nothing will happen yet you can minister to somebody somebody comes for counseling immediately a word will come as soon as you leave them you say God what is this and the heavens look like they're quiet there is a track record this is where men are separated from the boys this is where capacity is built. The end product of this track record is called an exchange. Where his strength swallows up your weakness. Where you are alive but no longer by your strength. You are alive by another agency that is not human. Now you are ready for the throne. Now you are ready for glory. There is no level of persecution that will shift your faith again. You have come to a point where you have gained stature in the spirit. Don't be afraid of establishing the track record. It is painful, many times embarrassing, discomforting. Creating a track record in the spirit will sting your ego beyond your imagination. Endure the pain, despise the mockery. God is doing something with your life. Gather your pain and your shame together because you will need them. They will strengthen you. Be careful what you call embarrassment. That will be your trophy tomorrow. Go through the pain. Track record. Are we together? Say track record. That one day you can say once upon a time. When I started ministry. We did not even have 10 naira to buy pure water. Yet we loved God. And God and man can testify. Do you know? Listen. When you see people become loyal to a man and to the teachings, it's not just because you are anointed alone. There is a track record. Are we together? You can say, oh, remember when we used to meet in the rain? And there is a human agent that says, yes. So if somebody now says, oh, pastors are doing church just for money, there will be a system of defense for you because there was a track record. Someone will say, I remember Emeka. I remember him. I remember us having crusade in the rain where we shouldn't do it but he still did it no I testify that this person loves God when it comes to a track record it's not only God that testifies men must testify that there is a track record people want to invite you to a big ministry they will ask questions who knows about this person which other ministries have invited him did you behave well did you preach well? 
were you respectful are you somebody who is matured and honoring by that track record a door will be open don't trivialize the passion to create track record you can ruin a great future when you refuse yourself let me tell you track record is a very you create it in a way that most times will be shameful because god will expose you to the eyes of all men they will see everything about you they will see your weaknesses they will see your limitations they will see your mistakes and you'll be saying lord why are you allowing people to see this and god will say so that there will be witnesses when i lift you witnesses there was a reason why god wanted people to see rahab he would have quickly preached to rahab and they would have come to meet a renewed rahab no meet the rahab sitting on the fence as a prostitute so that when i convert her and she becomes the great grandmother of jesus i can by her life show that i can use anybody listen for many years i wondered why the bible sometimes can be vulgar you will see informations that sorry to use the word explicit contents some contents in the when you really read some things in the bible you'll be like kai did god intend for children to read this i just think this is me as a human being lord this information is it really necessary did you have to put it there why will God sometimes God will talk about the dealings of people maybe with women or with some and God can go into remember all scriptures was inspired of the Holy Ghost it can be so meticulous to capture information that you are like ah, ah God we are adults we already know what you mean do you know why God does that so that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us so that when they see you tomorrow they say ah, ah, is Saul also one of the prophets let me tell you what for you today is shame tomorrow will be your system of defense did you hear what I said yes don't be ashamed everybody knows you are a single dad everybody knows you are a single mom and people look at you when God begins to use you and somebody says are you sure this lady did not do divination somebody will stand up and say I knew how when she could not take care of two children three children yet she loved god creating a track record will force you to be naked before everybody sometimes the judges in your season of track record are your own enemies and god will be the one to keep a chair for them to sit down ah. <laughs> ah. i know you don't like what i'm saying but it's true sometimes they are driving you out of the house with your wife and all of a sudden your sarcastic neighbors are there watching you are saying god but did you have to allow the neighbors to see our shame and god says just watch what i'm doing it's a movie there's part one part two part three part four part four is when you return back with your family in power and glory and you come to greet the neighbors and they say no 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 it's a lie when you see the enemies of a man testifying about God's goodness, a track record made it happen. Why am I telling you this? Some of you right now, listen, listen. Some of you are in the most uncomfortable situations in your life. Your ego has been stung. Everything in your life that represents honor seems like it has been taken away from you. I bring you a word of hope. Weep not. God is using your life to create a track record lord why will i serve you and be crying and then you make me cry before men so that when you smile they will know the god of heaven took you through this or that because some of you the testimony of your life people will never believe it when they see what god has done they can take it for granted and say you were just lucky and so god will say if it is your church members that see you they can say it is church manipulation but God will allow a non-believing person that you know doesn't lie to see it. And he's the one who will stand up and say, no, I know. There was a reason why Nicodemus came to Jesus by night as a witness. There had to be a witness in the, among the scribes and the Sanhedrin that he was God. Do you know Jesus hung naked? Everybody say a track record. Jesus, the son of the living God, crying should i trust that kind of person 
Jesus, are you that weak? You are in Gethsemane. What business do you have to do with tears? Are you not the one who should wipe tears? And the father kept silent. A track record. Imagine the throne without the cross. Track record. They put a crown of thorn upon his head. You would think that the power of the world should throw them away. But the thorns entered and real blood came out. Track record. They whipped him. 40 stripes save one. Do you know that they did not hang Jesus with a covering? He was naked. The word, please, Abba Father, talk to us. Have you lost your power? Did somebody vote you out of the throne? And heaven was silent. Here's what Jesus said. Eloi, Eloi. If Jesus didn't say this, we would think that, oh, he was a macho man. Jesus cried in frustration. Eloi, Eloi. Lamak sabachthani. Father, I, I understand the men forsaking me. But why have you forsaken me? You would have said, Jesus, don't fall our hand. The father was silent. And he said, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Jesus died life died life died when he died he went to hell all the demons were on him their creator they were on him to force him to bow look at the humiliation he went through it was a furnace of affliction but hallelujah when the legal claims of justice were paid the bible says he shook them he made a public show of them and all of a sudden he went to hades the place of the dead and preached to the departed saints and opened the gates and said follow me he had to be the firstborn among them that were resurrected and the bible says jesus resurrected and said all hail i know that i've gone through adulam but now is the time for the manifestation maybe we'll take that one next week no greatness listen this dimension your fasting will never take it away from you believe what i'm telling you master in the you know the millennial kingdom when you come to reign can you grant that my son two of my sons will sit at your left and right jesus didn't say the position is not vacant he said can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism there is a price listen do you know why god judges you when you talk about certain people even in the secret it's not that god is wicked that track record is a voice in the spirit are we together now ah what is there with papa deboe what is there all these men jare there's nothing special and that track record like the blood of abel cries to heaven lord someone is mocking your anointed they mocked the prophet and said you bald-headed man look small children was god so unmerciful she bears came out and devoured the children he suffered no man to do them wrong yea he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm but there is a track record koinonia we're going to pray please help that lady listen some of you right now you are in the black book of your entire family you are wondering why do they all hate me what wrong have i done god has exposed your weaknesses and your flaws before everybody that's the same way he will expose your glory too he won't just expose your weakness and leave you everybody saw you without results i'm proud of everything in my life today it's one of the reasons why people believe what god has done if I came from another city into Zaria, people may probably think uh, everything God did, he did in this city. It was in the presence of all and sundry. And I give him all the praise. Please hear me. Don't cry just because the landlord is chasing you out of the house. You trusted God. Don't worry. You may endure the shame, but the day you will still come to that same place and build an estate, even the most hardened unbeliever will say i know this man i know this man i know this man let me tell you something years ago 
people said a lot of things about me and you know i don't talk too much about all those things but some of them men in fact most of them if not all were well-meaning sincere people just because of how very controversial the dimensions of god in my life was you know and people said all kinds of things and sometimes those things were painful some were wrong some were insincere you know and so on and so forth people just said all kinds of things and then many years later i remember when i used to do counseling some of those same families that said very some maybe even very nasty things some of them now did not know that i was the same person they just kept hearing this person this person apostle apostle and some of those same families came for counseling i could identify them and you see them come with wine and say man of god what a privilege i've heard about you and i say please sit down sir please sit down ma sir if you know what is happening in my life and this thing is 10 years old i say so when you were shouting at me you also had problems in your life when you were acting as if nothing was wrong with you and i pray for them with all my heart and bless them and they get down on their knees i say god you <laughs> you don't have to worry and don't you be afraid joy comes in the morning troubles they don't last always help me oh, And he will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken tonight, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stay. No matter what comes no to your life. I can take it with Jesus I can take it with him I know I can stand no matter what may come my way my life is in your hands please listen to me can anything good come out of your life yes sir Apostle, you don't know what I've done with my life. Can anything good come out? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can anything good come out? Can God change my financial life? I know you are crying now. There's no food to eat. Don't give up. It looks like God is not with you. Hear me, Koinonia. It is the betting of glory. There is a relationship between death and glory. Why did God allow this pain, this shame happen? It is the betting of glory. The Bible says, hear me. It says, for our light afflictions, which walketh in us, a far more exceeding weight of glory. Our light afflictions, which is but for a moment. My status is changing, it's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Oh, yes, God is changing everyone's story. Status is changing, there's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. No matter where your family has been, prophesy it. Status is changing. No more decline. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. To better days. To better days. To better days. Hey. I'm on my way. On my way. right the master key to attracting uncommon favor please make reference to my teaching activating seasons of greatness there i teach that the key to greatness in life is favor 
And I teach that there are two dimensions of favor. There is favor with God and favor with men. The Bible says, and the boy Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and men. I told you that it is possible to have favor with God and not have favor with men. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. So, I told us that the key to having favor with God, there are three things that I taught us. I'm just recapping on the teaching. Three things. Number one, I told us is called the fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence. Reverence. Priority. Respect for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two, I told us our tithing. 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 I can't remember what I said the third one was. But then, I remember teaching us that when it comes to favor with men, there is a requirement and the Lord asked me to recap it. I'm telling you, God has an agenda with us this year. Praise the Lord. God wants to break barriers and not only cause us to be healing people and bless people, but God wants to make people and families prosper. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a very serious issue in many families and I told you this is Bethel. Praise the Lord. Diligence. Everybody say diligence. We are going to talk a bit, just a few minutes on diligence. What is diligence? Diligence is the virtue of hard work. The virtue of thoroughness. Diligence and mastery, really. Diligence and mastery. The ultimate key to attracting uncommon favor in this realm and in this system, please pay attention is diligence and mastery hallelujah praise the Lord by the grace of God, one of the things that God has helped us to understand is the balance and understanding on how the kingdom works, the components of the kingdom now we have a lot of people who leave everything all to God. They say Jesus has died. He's paid all the price. He should come to me freely. You will, you will be broke and you will fail in life if that is the circumference of your belief about God. On the other hand, we have people who are just hustlers. They want to make it by any means and they throw away the God factor. Both are wrong. Are you getting me? Diligence and mastery. Two keys have been challenging us last, um, I think it was last week, I did challenge us in this light again. Um, what is mastery? Mastery means comprehensive knowledge or skill in a subject or area. Comprehensive knowledge, skill, proficiency, competence. Genesis 41, please, quickly. Genesis 41, from verse 36 to 46, just 10 verses. And let's look at one case study in the Bible. Genesis 41. There was a man in the Bible called Joseph. Forty-one thirty-six from verse 36. Okay, let's read very quickly. This was Joseph now revealing and interpreting the dream of Pharaoh. Verse 36 says, And that food shall be for storage in the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not in famine. Verse 37 the Bible says, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. 38. Can we read together if you're there? One, to read. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this in whom the spirit of God is? 
He said, can we find such a person? Joseph began to give an interpretation of the dream. And he said, this interpretation means there will be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. Now, Pharaoh, here is my solution. Find a man discreet and wise and set him over this project that during the seven years they will gather plenty and during the seven years of famine they will be able to enjoy. And Pharaoh said, who is the person? In other words, he threw a challenge to the entire Egypt. Can we find such a man? If you know you are that qualified, if you know you are that proficient, step up. No race was mentioned. He didn't say if you are an Egyptian or if you are a Jew. He said, can we find such a person? I want to bless that person. I want to lift and promote that person. But can we find such a diligent person? Such a skilled person? Such a proficient person? And the Bible says there was none. And then, verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown thee this thing, there is none such so discreet and wise as thou art. He was not just lifted because he was a he was a of, of the covenant and, and all of that. No, the Bible says the king testified, Pharaoh. He said, There is none, there is none who is as discreet and wise, and because of that. Verse 40, thou shalt be over my house immediately. No board meeting, no discussion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thou shalt be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne shall I be greater than thou. 41, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, see, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of authority, and put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. 44, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had, and he cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Verse 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. Look at that. 45 says, And Pharaoh called Joseph, you know, called him all the name, and he gave unto him his wife, Asenath, and the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went all over the land of Egypt, the last verse. And Joseph was how many years old? How many years old? Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out of the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the entire land of Egypt. Everybody say diligence. Say proficiency. Listen to me. The world that we live in right now, if you want the favor, favor, that's the reward system of the kingdom. The favor of God. Many people have been taught that favor just means unmerited access. I told you that you need to get my teachings, the full gospel. There I give you a balanced view of the dimension of God's grace and favor. Because I told you every Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life without a partnership on your own part is an irresponsible Christianity. Read from Genesis to Revelation. Every time God wanted to bless a man, he demanded partnership on his own part. Is that true? It's not all up to God. And it's not all up to you. Your own part is to be diligent. To gain mastery. Hallelujah. I began to teach last week and I said that there are so many people in the body of Christ... They are poor, they are average, they are poor at their place of work, they are poor and, 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 and in, in, in different endeavors that they do. Different ministers of the gospel, they want crowd, they want grace, they want fame, they want popularity, but there is no diligence. No diligence. No mastery. Right? A man of God comes to stand on stage and says, don't worry, don't mind what I'm saying, just believe that the power of God will touch you. Let me tell you something. 
When you see a congregation gather like this, they are a mixed multitude. Not everybody is a daft. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are people who walk with God. There are people who are intellectuals. There are people who are committed to making an impact. I told you excellence is a language. Those who are excellent understand the language. It calls a certain kind of people to your sphere of influence. Is God speaking to us now? God wants to prosper us. But let me tell you, our part of the equation is that we must contend for mastery. We must contend for diligence. Joseph, so many people in Egypt, the question I always ask is, didn't Pharaoh have a son? The Bible may not give us that record, but at least as a Pharaoh, he should be married. Is that true? For him to have neglected his son and to make Joseph a prize, it wasn't just because he loved Joseph. It was because if he did not exhort Joseph to solve that problem, Egypt would die in famine. Listen, let me tell you. Diligence will make men overlook your age. Diligence and mastery will make men overlook your gender. They will overlook a lot of flaws in your life because you have something that cannot be rejected. It's God speaking to us. Can we find such a man that is exceptionally excellent? Can we find that exceptional banker? Can we find that exceptional lecturer? Can we find that exceptional student? Can we find that exceptional man of God? Gone are the days where people think ministry is for daft people. You submit your CV. There's no job. They drive you everywhere. And you just say, well, since they've rejected me everywhere, let me go to the vineyard. Ministry is not for idiots. Ministry is not for foolish people. This is the wrong mindset that has been given about ministry. Whenever they see people going into ministry, they think that they have failed and they don't know what to do in their lives. They didn't give them a job and they said, let's go into the vineyard. The Bible says he gave unto one five. He gave unto one two. He gave unto one one act. According to their several ability. He had tested them through time. And found out that some were more proficient than others. You must hate and fight mediocrity out of your life. Especially in this season of God's glory. Hallelujah. It's good to pray. It's good to fast. But you must be diligent. You must be excellent. You must do everything you do with uncanny mastery. The minimum standard in the world today is mastery. Exceptional diligence. While others are looking for jobs and crying, there are other people jobs are looking for. I know someone in this country, I was sharing with the school of ministry students last year. He does three jobs and works only three times a day. His minimum salary for one of them is 500000 minimum he does the job at his terms the day he coughs the whole company will go bankrupt everybody say mastery is God challenging us when I came in I was blessed when I heard our sister's testimony about the changes that was happening in our office the Bible says you are the light say I am the light you are the light does not just mean you are anointed. It means that you are exceptional enough. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is gaining influence. I've told you this. The weapon of kingdom advancement is influence. Because influence is the ability, listen to me. Influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies. To buy into your perspectives about life. When you are a man of influence, you sustain an ability that causes men to love your God, to love your principles. That's influence. The kingdom isn't just going to be advanced by sharing tracts. Right? And I told the Lord, I will never pastor a weak congregation 
people who are broke, suffering, failures in life, but are just crying and saying, Lord, we love you. Sooner or later, it will affect you. When there is no food in your house, you will not be able to fast. You see, the reason is because a number of people have others who are giving them money. Uncle or auntie. Remember we spoke last, last, um, last week, right? Dependency mentality. Take responsibility over your destiny and make up your mind to be diligent. A lot of people blame God and say, my, my boss is in the same koinonia with me and he can't lift me. He won't lift you because you are a member of koinonia. He will lift you because you are proficient and excellent. Praise the Lord. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You have to preach to yourself. I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's gotta be more than this. You must be excellent. You must be excellent. Be exceptional. What you are trusting God to use to feed you. What you are trusting God, the value that you think you are adding to men, be exceptional. You claim God is calling you into the healing ministry. You are, you are average. The last time somebody got healed was five months ago. Right? No pressing you, don't, you, are not, you are not following the principles. There are so many men of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You give them the mic. They make blunders on stage. No Bible study. Prayer life zero. Right? They are comprehension of the truth. They don't study books. They don't read. They sleep and snore like every other lazy person. You will never be given a ministry. No, sir. Ministry is the highest responsibility in this earth. A president can only rule for four years and, and drop or eight years maximum. A minister is an envoy called to prepare God's people. There are many business people. I want to be a businessman. You write it in your room. CEO. No mastery. No diligence. They talk. They cannot articulate their value. Let me tell you something. If we do not challenge ourselves, we will keep dancing around in church, but Babylon will feed us. And I told you, whoever feeds you is the one you bow to. No matter what you claim to do in church. Joseph. Same story with Daniel. He ran through the dispensation of three kings and he was honored by them individually. Please refuse mediocrity. Challenge yourself. If God speaking to us, challenge yourself. First Kings 11. Let's quickly look at an interesting story again. First Kings chapter 11. Bible talks about an interesting man called Jeroboam. First Kings 11. Twenty six to twenty eight. You will have an encounter of a lifetime tonight, I tell you. Verse 26, are we there? It says, And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephraimite of Zereda, Solomon's servant, whose, mother, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hands against the king. Now listen, there's no time to tell us the whole story. But the Bible tells us of the son of this widow called Jeroboam. And he said he was Solomon's servant. He was a servant. But watch what happened, verse 24. It says, and this was the cause that lifted up his hands against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches in the city of David, his father. Verse 28. It says, and the man, Jeroboam, was a what? A mighty man of valor as a result. And Solomon seeing the young man that he was what? That he was what? He didn't say that he was anointed. 
He didn't say that he was a Jew. He didn't say that he was a male. He said he was a mighty man of valor. Do you know what it means for you to be called a mighty man of valor in ancient times? The Bible talks about the mighty man of David. One who fought single-handedly, threw down 800 people and a sword cleaved to his hands. The Bible talked about David of the tribe of Benjamin. The Bible tells us that the Benjamites, Bible history tells us that the, the Benjamites were so, were so fine in, in throwing slings, they could diverge an arrow with a sling. So it wasn't just that the anointing came upon David to kill Goliath. The anointing came upon something he had. Are you getting what I'm saying? Here the Bible says that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor. What did he do? The Bible says in verse 28. Seeing the young man that he was industrious, advantageous. Made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Jesus. Seeing that he was industrious. He said, no, 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 no. You can't be a, a servant just like the other people. You are so proficient beyond servanthood. And I lift you. You are the head of the house of Joseph. Diligence gives God room to bless you. Mastery shuts the mouth of critics. Mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers. You make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery. Hallelujah. You must be proficient at your place of work, in ministry, in business. Pay the price. Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, Every area the Lord wants to use me, I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest. Hallelujah. A man of God, God wants to bless you. But there is no grace, no revelation. No, the personal contributions. You go for a meeting, a major conference, and waste the time of the people talking nonsense. And at the end of it, they say, uh, thank you for coming. Here's your honorarium. May the Lord bless you. And they will never invite you again. Never. God open doors. You close them by yourself. Let me tell you. Both in the church and in the secular environment. The minimum standard is exceptional excellence. Minimum standard. Is God speaking to us? You're a hairstylist. Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song. There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth. You come on stage and sing. And make a lot of blunders. And when you step down they say Kai. Ken. Ah. That song. I say really. You, you see how you are deceiving yourself. We, Our standards are very small. So we, we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast. Because our standards are small. You're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? The day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person. You pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have an 
apostolic, you go for a crusade, you see them, and you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They line the sick people, they are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Say, ah, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12, is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Kabbalah Katayama. A workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community you are the best. See the nations. If you don't make room for the nations, you will never be beyond the nations. That's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members. More than 100 members. More than 500 members. More than 1,000 members. Because the capacity, they have not made room for the blessing. Is God speaking to us please? Don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say this man is so wicked. This guy just got a job. In two months he's promoted him. Proficiency. Proficiency. Closely tied to that, I spoke about laziness. Oh, by the way, Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, See thou a man diligent in his business. It gives you an assurance. It says you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent, it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy. Physically lazy. We're in a hurry to show quick success. We're in a hurry to show that things are working. Life is not like that. The Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will. Proverbs, Proverbs what? 10 verse 4, who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus, Proverbs, Proverbs after Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4, it says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. He becometh poor. 
that dealeth with a slack hand, a lazy person, no inertia, he becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Shiva la kura 12 verse 11. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. It said not slothful. The word slothful there means laggy. You are not, you are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes. Right? It said not slothful in business. Diligent. Fervent. Zealous in spirit. Serving the Lord. So you want to serve the Lord? You want to serve his body? You must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something. As you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth. I've tried, but compared to where God wants to take me, the journey is still far. It will help you to humble yourself. Whether they write Apostle Jakes, Bishop Jakes, right? It's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting. It's a very ugly scenario. My goal is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of, the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office at the bio, bio what? Biotech, that biotech place. And when I went in, I looked at his office and I looked at everything. I said, wow. It's not about size. It's about content. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's about content. At least I know that there is a project that they are on now. Projects of, of hundreds of millions. Competent. When you become competent, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, all of a sudden, where you are coming from will never matter. Jeroboam, the Bible says his mother was a widow, meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much, but competence. Please, there are many of us here, it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents. They didn't go to school. They done their best. Don't sit down in the average there and keep forcing your mother, your father, the poor people doing their best. Rise up and change your status. Don't just sing it as a song. Is God speaking to anyone here? I read the story of Joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people. Joseph was 30 years. 30 years. And as a matter of fact, out of that 30 years, about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave. What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. what he just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches 
and they will find him and not even ask what is it nobody will ask whatever and say come we are willing to pay you huh and you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say lord this church i already see my destiny no matter what you saw in your dream i guarantee you if you are not diligent you won't enter into it praise the lord you are a doctor the first person you gave an injection had problem second person had problem that problem before you blame demons we're going to there will be deliverance here shortly but i told you that the biggest problem of africa is blaming demons you can't take demons to court you can't arrest them we we like the fact that they are invisible entities we excuse our failures everything demons you woke up by nine i know it's a spirit that that stops me ha huh? I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly. As if it's your place. As if you are the director. You are The CEO that will interview you was there by seven. You stroll around. You came late and say, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long. But the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place. Sharpen yourself. Become exceptional. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance. When John appeared with uncanny accuracy, he knew that this was Jesus. He said, behold the lamb. Behold the lamb. He didn't mistake Jesus for John the beloved. He didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room. So that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent.
Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah. Status is changing. It's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. It's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do. That's what my Bible says. It said, do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional to deliver what is season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed and have been graced, I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts, when you refine your abilities. When you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Kabaraka sharpen yourself and then you are ready for the anointing the fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar the fire does not just fall the anointing falls when you are prepared when you are ready then you become relevant 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 i refuse to be relegated and i refuse you and forbid you from being relegated not just because you are a christian but because you do not have what to offer hallelujah my younger brother very brilliant gentleman 
when he graduated, a job was not forthcoming. And I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5000 I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, getting an exact blueprint of his assignment. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David, my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20, downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since. But he had not done his work. Now I have found my servant. And with my holy oil I have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle. The architect of that construction. He was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you. When God anoints your grace. He will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave. You become a city that is set on a hill. That cannot. Cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark. For the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service. This is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is. It's raining, raining. Let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places. To come tonight because it is part of your play your own part and tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you like Saul you will go back and they will say ah uh, is Saul also one of the prophets when did you enter this dimension favor is when preparation meets opportunity it's not magical it's a formula and God is calling us wipe the tears of your family Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that. You must make up your mind brothers and sisters. 
that something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you. And they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school. Or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and I send you like the foxes of Samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar I've said it again and again that true leadership the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders not maintain followers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry... Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten. But I will be called Pula. Pula. The land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business. Mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Koinonia as you cry upon him he grants you grace Lord you want to change our stories in this season we make room we make room we make room we make room we reject the spirit of laziness Time and chance happen to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all.
Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence. Exceptional competence. Don't let any man preach you against competence. Incompetence will make you poor. Incompetence will make you angry. Incompetence will make you a failure. Incompetence will make you average. I must stand out. I must stand out in my generation. I must stand out because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says, For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you. Without bias, they will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials, sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. Hallelujah. Insist that you must be touched this night. 
insist that something must change it doesn't take time it just takes one encounter you came with a lot of challenges don't sit down and waste your time make sure you cry unto god tell the lord exactly what you want tonight go ahead please speak to the lord especially for those standing outside make sure you talk to him see the rain of your love I feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear we see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it rain let it rain would you open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain open hallelujah hallelujah listen i don't care what the issue is let your faith rise right now are you hearing what i'm saying i see sick people all around inside and outside and i see all kinds of people but i want you to know tonight that the god of wonders is still in this place so let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy light. hands everyone hallelujah listen Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself but for your family members all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for in the name of Jesus I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil every covenant every spell at the count of three let the fire of God separate those people right now one, two, three. Shake those devils 
I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God, I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this crown, I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. Satan, let God's people go. There's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere. There is no hiding place, not for witchcraft. There is no hiding place. I command judgment. Let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains. Hallelujah. I see a lot of chains. Lift your hands again. I see chains. So many chains. Break. Chains. Listen, some of you, this change has lasted for years and decades. I don't care how long it has been. As you shout that name again, I see many people outside. You will know the chain has broken. That embargo over your family. You will know it when it happens. Because I hear sounds of chains at the count of three. Shout that name again with all your might. And I command that as they shout, May those chains break. One, two, three. Chains of stagnation. Chains. Chains. Break it, take 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 from every chain, I break free chains of sickness, chains of poverty, chains, chains of stagnation. <laughs> I break free by the blood of Jesus. 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 They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus. Now over families. Any family. Under the sound of my voice. You have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am. And I command. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families. Shake it, take 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 it, take
Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? Zechariah 1 18. It says, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. And they will terrorize those horns. We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt. And after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full, completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families no matter how long the blood of jesus annihilates the legal hold you have i don't care what covenant you have in the name of jesus therefore i speak to every foul spirit that at the count of three you let them go never to return right now in the name of jesus one two three go 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 out you go out you go out you go never to return out you go by the ministry of the blood by the ministry of the blood I cost you by the ministry of the blood release the families release their finances release their destinies go now go now I compel you by the blood of Jesus that blood opens the gates of captivity. Hallelujah. I declare every family under bondage free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed, we open it now. You will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie. Stephanie. I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish fast. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like is it four children? Or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours... If it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let's know if there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. 
Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother, but upon the family. And it's a prophetic call. It's a prophetic call. Right? It's not only your mother. I didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know you people. But the hand of God is going to come upon you. It's a mighty anointing of the spirit. It will come upon you. Are you part of the family? Huh? You are related. You are what? You are on your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come. Come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? the Lord is going to lift you why am I seeing a ring in your hand I'm not seeing a physical ring but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring your wedding bells are ringing are you married huh this is what I'm <laughs> we don't feel embarrassed we are a family marriage is not a bad thing Abi mommy is it a bad thing it's not a bad thing because there is nobody and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen, he said, We see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen, listen, my dear, you don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, he will make it happen. My brother. This year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does what what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. This one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now because they have been talking about this woman she sees and people have been saying she's fake I'm saying if this woman is fake she will not enter this place I guarantee you except I'm not a man of God please she's not fake what she needs is is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened she has a lot of prophetic insight but the word level is very low so there is dwindling that stability in the spirit is not there that's all this mama is not fake because i'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing very powerfully come madam come let's pray to the king you have taken all the glory you have taken hold hands both of you I show you a mystery. Madila Katabarata. Jembra Mato Zatali Kaparando Skolapaya. Mambro no supaya. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together, it's a happy anointing. That is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing. Drink of that wine right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to help her. You won't be with her forever. But the Lord is going to lift you in due season. And you will begin to see in a strange way. May the Lord bless you. May he anoint you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break the embargo of darkness over the family. Come. You're a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. 
light shines in the darkness you must release her let her go now I'm seeing an old woman's face but in the name of Jesus I declare you step into strange dimensions of grace I command deliverance to you right now in the name of Jesus God bless you it's all right I bless this family the Lord changes your story you will return with dramatic testimonies in Jesus name nay we I'm hearing a name of a place there is there's nay we I know it's an evil place right there is there is a there is somebody I, I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place nay we who is that please if it's your case whether you are outside just make your way so that you don't waste our time please there are so many other people come mama she's your mother what's wrong with her is this working please help us she's having a problem with her legs she's having problem with her legs. knee problems her legs, oh. her legs. Her arthritis I know. you don't know yes. you I love god very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God? Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's, let's not. Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Left? Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry, it's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me, just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus? I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Lord, praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My come on, give Jesus. Oh, to break every chain, break every chain. Let's go. Come. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Yes. Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? They just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request. Not for money. Many of you will ask for money. I will give me money sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? 
Help us now. Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? What happened to you? Uh, I felt sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. So we went for so many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. You said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, so they've left you to the, die. Yes, sir. Cuffed the, of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did it stop working? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs. In the name of Jesus I release strength to these legs right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy, look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. You know, come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this hole. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made that me yours. Please bring out.
I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now please, all those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jexa, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen, all of you standing, I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you, the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing so you must focus don't be distracted don't be distracted hallelujah elijah said if you can see me don't don't be distracted please hallelujah please pass your request ushers let's hurry up please get them to the aisle just pass it to the last person the last person by the side please help the ushers inside and outside it's not a ritual there is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place please begin to pray in tongues as you do that please everywhere begin to pray in tongues all those connecting with us online it's time for them to connect now so that we can Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter. And brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. 
Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long, let's do it very quickly. I have seen God do strange things. Strange things in the lives of people. We have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles. Please, I want you to know the person you are praying to. I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman. It's not to an idol. You are not praying to the president of this nation. The king of kings. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels, there are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Shaka prato soto bala la bala la bala la bala. Hey, se mara na na mosuri na 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 mas. Hey, shapra pakata bala la bala. Rakata prato shupre kiri bala la bala. Hey, shabara la 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 bala. Father, hear the prayers of your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles. Supernatural jobs, supernatural lifting. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer with all flesh Blessed Lord, let every cry, every need, Lord, every pain, Lord, let things that look impossible by men, we pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hitherto, we ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord, the blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs, amazing, blessed jobs, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls, calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord, the needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, we ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalah he said it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands as your level changes. Lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level, by the weapon of the prophetic, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command those limitations broken. Human limitations, demonic limitations, I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Listen, this proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics. In the name that is above all names. We send angels to every department. Of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty. May they tear down. May they uproot. Every trace of wickedness. May they tear down. May they uproot. In the name of Jesus. Let missing scripts be found. Let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are many people you want to take steps, but fear is keeping you down. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, and to deliver them all through the fear of death. Have all their lifetime be subject to bondage. I cause fear from your life now. I cause fear from your life now. I cause fear. I cause fear, I cause fear in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for you. There are many who have been praying. Lord, reveal to me the purpose of my existence. There are people who have been crying. I don't want to waste my time in destiny. I pray for you. That through a night vision. 
mysterious prophetic encounters may your exact assignment be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ there are people praying right now all you, are, you have come here for is the direction for the next level you just came to get direction I prophesy to you the Bible says and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way I command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of Jesus I connect you I connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of Jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood I break you free from any covenant of infirmity I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of Jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you. Hallelujah. I pray for your finances. In the name of Jesus. There are many who are giving. You are tithing. You are faithful. But it just looks like when things are about to happen, there are limitations. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare that beginning from next month, I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the Bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet I command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for everyone called dull in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the bible says and he opened their understanding 
that they might understand the scriptures i pray for you may understanding be granted unto you hallelujah favor the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now in the name of jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life i bring that confusion to an end now i pray for all those who came here specifically trusting god for the fruit of the womb mazuka parata teleka in fact i pray for you listen not just physical barrenness any area of your life this is the year of the rain and when rain falls barrenness stops therefore i command be fruitful in the name of jesus fruitful multiply replenish subdue and have dominion in the name of jesus i command everything called dead in your life and your family i don't care for how long it has died your health your business your life in the name of the lord jesus i command resurrection right now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you there are people who desire god you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter i pray for you may the angel of the lord's presence visit you you may not understand what i'm saying may the angel of the lord's presence visit you in the name of jesus christ i pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are using that brings bread help her please i pray for you the works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer i put an anointing on your skill i put an anointing i put an anointing on your ability i put an anointing on your gift on your work on your skill may it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension hallelujah now lift your hands i just want to do an impartation there are people who have come from different places please be sensitive we are out of time we will soon round up but it's time to receive something listen listen i told you there will be many impartations hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference are you hearing what i'm saying no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place help her please it's time for you to catch this thing for real it's yours for the taking listen i want to pray as i stretch my hands and pray inside and outside wherever you are you must not be in ministry like fivefold whatever area many of you will begin to have dreams encounters listen many of you will step into healing graces there's no time to move one by one but i'm going is one of the major assignment god gave me tonight please believe it you will argue it at your own detriment there is a cheap route the help of god is here to lift you the help of god is here to take you lift your hands everybody father i pray that in the next two minutes let there be 
from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings leadership anointings leadership anointings i impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 i release it to you utterance in the name of jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance i i release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom i grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah the final prayer i want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed but not honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor that fragrance that compels loyalty that fragrance zamatikalai lord everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside may this grace that that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of jesus i release it from the depths of my heart receive it in the name of jesus from today everywhere you go may honor follow you and i declare these hands that are lifted like aaron like joshua lifted up the hands of his servant moses i command may those hands never go down may the lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down and i pray for marriages supernaturally may god connect people supernaturally in the name of jesus christ hallelujah as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members no matter where they are I prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members hallelujah now very quickly you are here you've never given your heart to the Lord please hear me please keep standing everybody no moving around let's honor them just in one minute you're here inside and outside you have never made a decision for Jesus Christ or at one time you have made a decision for Jesus but you found yourself dwindling. You have seen the hand of God and Jesus is calling you back home. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't let any man cajole you. Win the war in your heart today for the sake of your destiny. Wherever you are, please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here. I want to lead you personally to Christ and pray for you. Go ahead. Are there people like that? Go ahead. Don't look at any neighbor. Don't look at anyone. Wherever you are, inside or outside, don't pretend it. Jesus is calling you very quickly. Very quickly. Where are those who are giving their lives to Jesus? 
inside or outside make your way to the front don't be ashamed please appreciate them coin on you as they come god bless you keep coming god bless you keep coming no matter how far rush and make your way young and old god bless you keep coming it's time to make it right don't play games with destiny jesus is calling you come and surrender everything totally and consciously totally and consciously please make way for them don't stop them make way for them come to jesus hallelujah i salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out hallelujah the prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem i want you to pray from the depths of your heart lift your right hand and say after me passionately and truly say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you i believe you died for me you rose again for me i surrender completely to you take charge of my life from today and forever I denounce sin, I denounce Satan, and I receive eternal life into my spirit. Keep your hands lifted. Father, receive these ones. Change them. Transform their lives radically. I cause the power of sin from your life, and I release grace upon you to experience that which Christ has done. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, Attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you